Thanks again, everyone, for joining us uh, this evening or afternoon, depending on where, where you are in the world. Uh, my name is Terry Barton. I'm one of the founders of the Coaching Manual. Uh, I look after product development for the, for the platforms that we have. Um, and I'm also a, a grassroots coach, um, have been coaching for a number of years, the game from when my son started playing in the structured um, football environment at under seven. And I've gone with his team all the way through. <clears throat> so some of what I'll talk about is my personal experience of, of, of what I've done with, with the players that I've worked with over the, over the past seven years or so, um, as well as experiences of growing up with the game and playing the game, how things have changed um, and why we feel there is a need to, for us as coaches to do a little bit more. I'll touch on that a little bit. And, but just to start off with some stats that we, that we know from various studies that have been done um, globally um, and in the UK, a couple of sobering stats really to get started. First one is that children play outside about half as much as um, parents did 20 years ago. So children don't um, go out and play in, in the same way. And anybody who's on this call will be well aware of that, especially if you have your own children. So that's quite a sobering thought to think that children are spending 50% less outside during the week and at the weekend than, than people were doing 20 plus years ago. Lots of factors for that, which we won't go into. Um, the children's lives are busier fundamentally. They've, they've got more things going on. Um, so that's kind of stat number one. Stat number two, which was um, found through a, a very large Australian study, um, which took place over many years, found that children um, in the modern day take about one minute, 30 seconds longer to run a mile than children did in the 1980s and early 1990s. So that's a really sobering thought as well, because um, what it essentially means is that, that children are not as fit as they used to be. Um, and if you're coaching the game, you'll probably have noticed it. It's um, one of the hardest challenges I think we have as coaches is to give that motivation or encourage that motivation within children to take part in as much physical activity that they can, whether that's within um, soccer or not. Um, so there's lots of kind of things that are, are putting pressure on children, um, which means that they're not practicing um, sport as much. They're not playing football specifically as much. Um, it's not played in schools as much as it used to be. It's, it, they are almost entirely forced into formal learning for football. So that puts a huge um, pressure on coaches because it's now your responsibility, my responsibility, our responsibility to give our players the best possible education in a much more compressed time frame than we had in the past. Um, so our sessions have to be excellent. Our information has to be excellent. Um, but with the best will in the world, if we're only working with those kids for one hour a week at training and we've got a game at the weekend for maybe an hour, 45 minutes to a, an hour and a half, depending on the age of those players, <clears throat> with the best will in the world um, and kind of increasing the ability of players is still a massive challenge. Why does this have a bigger impact on football than it does for many other sports? <clears throat> well, football is fundamentally uh, a game about eye, uh, eye foot coordination. So we're not looking at <clears throat> hand eye, it's foot eye. Um, so that creates lots of more complexity. Um, the techniques that children are learning with football are more difficult to learn than, than sports where the hands are predominantly used. Um, so the, that kind of is, is one of the problems we face is that it is a very complicated and difficult sport to learn. The other problem that many coaches will face depending on the age group that they coach is that because of that complexity, 
we tend to start football education very young. Um, so that presents another big challenge because we're working with young people. We're working with young humans who are difficult to coach. Um, the, those hardest age groups to coach are those younger ones. Um, but it's essential that we start soccer players as young as possible because that's a real opportunity for us to um, improve their technical ability not just for football, um, not just for, for playing sport, but just for life in general. Um, lots of what we teach young people within this game um, fall within the general physical literacy framework um, that, that you'll find for any government. So it's, um, it's, it's important that we kind of acknowledge those two things. We're starting them young and it's a complicated game um, and we don't have much time to do it. So we don't have much time to teach it. So it's it's a perfect storm. We're coaching the most difficult game there is, um, team game that there is to coach. So we need as much help as we can get as coaches. So I'm going to talk through a couple of things that we, um, we've we got here at the coaching manual, which will hopefully um, help us kind of navigate this process. So I'm just going to share a different screen. Just bear with me for a moment. This is kind of my account within um, the coaching manual. So coaching manual platform for those who are using it is a massive resource. Um, there's lots of great content in here to help you kind of train your players, um, which you can organize however you like. Um, I do it in very different ways to lots of people. Um, I organize my folders based on things that um, I need to, to focus on for my individual players. So um, I look at things that are very age specific. So lots of content in the coaching manual. We can find that quite easily in the training ground, looking into practices um, and then filtering by the age groups that we are working with to find stuff. So what we know is that the sessions are good and they'll work and that's fine. But what I want to talk about a little bit more tonight, rather than just focusing on putting on good training sessions, because if we're volunteer coaches or if we're paid coaches, um, that's kind of our job to put on as good a session as possible and make sure kids learn as much as possible. What I'm going to focus on a little bit more tonight, um, as we come towards the end of the season for some, um, I know that some of the spring seasons in the USA are, are, are kind of in the, in the kind of second half of those seasons and will be ending in kind of May time, which is around the same time that the, the long season that we've had in the UK ends. I know that in other parts of the world, like Australia, it's not the same. Um, but what I want to talk about is how do we work with kids outside of training? So how do we help them improve when they're not on the training pitch? So there's a couple of things you can do with the coaching manual, which are, are worth um, learning. Firstly, if I search just the, the phrase one-to-one, -one, um, then I can see that I have lots of one-to-one -one activities that I can work on here. There's, there's three pages of one-to-one -one activities, um, 16 activities per page. So there's an entire one-to-one -one training curriculum for people. Now, if you're coaching your own child, then it might be something that you use with your own child. Um, but if not, then it might be something that you can share with parents. Um, these activities are designed to help children improve technically, and to improve their um, fitness. So there's a mixture of um, strength and conditioning exercises as well as just pure technical training, which they can watch these sessions and do with um, their parent or with their brother or sister or with a friend. So, and also they can be done with coaches. They can be used as part of coaching sessions. So here's a whole load of things that we can say to a kid. Here's five exercises, go and practice those. Or here's, here's 20 exercises, um, season's coming to an end, go and practice those. So that's kind of what I do with, with my team. As we come to the end of the season, we have a couple of probably three weeks off, um, but I'll give them some activities so that when they are out there and, and, and having fun and, and playing and doing, what, doing whatever they, they do in their downtime, they've got some things that they can work on that will help them. No pressure. Um, I'm not recording any of that. I'm just saying here's stuff. If, you, if you're keen and you're motivated, go and do it. What else can we do? Um, another search that we can look on is ball mastery. 
So if I search for ball mastery and click on view all practices, then I can see all of the ball mastery activities that are inside the platform. Again, there's six pages, eight pages of activities here. So loads and loads of ball mastery. Now, some of these ball mastery activities are, um, are sessions and, and practices, but a lot of them are just plain skills that they can go and do on their own and, um, and learn, you know, in their own time, essentially. So lots of, lots of ball mastery activities um, that I can give to the kids. Ball mastery is the basic fundamental building blocks of technique. So if we think of the development of young players, um, the way that we think about it at the coaching manual is that we start with technique. Technique becomes something that's, um, that is given to players very early on. My own particular experience of this was for the first five years of, of coaching them, ball mastery was a part of every single practice that we did um, or some form of technique training, whether that was passing, dribbling, controlling the ball, but there was always some basic ball mastery activities. Because without technique, you can't execute the different parts of the game that you need to be able to execute as you develop. So again, going back to the idea that we're working with young kids, um, there's a big challenge because you do stuff with them and it doesn't work and it gets frustrating for you as a coach, for them as a, a child. You just have to stick with it and you have to find a way to help the child stick with it by making it fun, by making it um, obvious that you notice the improvement that they make. Um, it's hard working with kids sometimes because the, the improvement that you see might not be the same as somebody who's not seen them for four weeks. You might see a, a huge step forward. So technique's important. Without technique, um, the game is very difficult to play, virtually impossible. Um, we would then layer onto the technique the idea of the mechanics of the game. So the principles of play, how does the game work? Um, technique, mechanics. Um, the building blocks, if you like, so that they can start to understand how different things in the game are supposed to happen. That's what I did entirely for the first um, six years of training the, the, the boys that I was working with, um, not really any tactical approach. Tactics really is the, the, the icing on top. So master the techniques, understand the mechanics, be able to execute the mechanics using the techniques, and then we can start to lay a tactical understanding on further down the line. And that really is the same with every single development model in, in the world. It's why we play small sided games, because it gives us more opportunity to get touches on the ball. Um, and it's why we um, kind of follow that through in small sided games all the way up to the 11 aside game. Tactics don't really apply until 11 aside, but there's always a bit of a risk of coaches thinking, well, I'm going to introduce a tactic that's going to help me win with younger players, i.e. going long because I've got to fast forward. Um, that could actually be detrimental to the development of players because you're not teaching them how the mechanics of the game actually work in terms of playing through, creating space, creating width and doing all of those other things, which are going to be really important to them when they get a bit older and those physical advantages start to disappear. So that's important that we focus on technique, we focus on mechanics. Um, and I've put a couple of links in the chat box so that you can have a look at those links, the links for ball mastery and one-to-one. -one. How do we get players to see this stuff? Well, I've introduced my players into um, the, the coaching manual platform. So I've actually added, added all of those in. Now they, in order to see um, the video content, then they need to be able to, um, they need to be able to access that. So I've also put a link in there, which is a, a simple link to help players get signed up, which you can share with players. We can then sign them up. You can then add them to a team. You can then share those technique videos and those one-to-one -one things with them so that they can watch them, do them at home and whatever. So technique's important. We, we know that. So what's the next thing that, that's really important, I think, in terms of engaging with players? Well, we've got to make it fun. Um, we've got to find a way to, to create players who are self-motivated. So I'm going to share something else now, um, and I'll walk through how this works for um, the purposes of what we're, we're talking about tonight. So we've got um, Top Techers, which is our technical training tool. 
So this is free for coaches. You can sign up and you can invite players in. There's actually a, a chunk of things that are free for players as well. So I'm going to log in. I'm logging in as a coach and parent. So I just need to press the button. Um, and I'll just log into my account and I'll show you uh, what this is all about. So this is something that I give to players so that I do have some insight into what they're doing um, and also a way for me to make this fun for them so that they are doing stuff that's going to benefit them in the off season um, so that I can then I can then kind of work with them on those different techniques techniques when we come back for pre-season training um, and a mixture of fitness and uh, technical skills throughout the summer hopefully means that they come back in good condition ready to play but top techers is something that we developed to help plug those gaps between training sessions when you don't have the players with you um, but you still want them to do some meaningful practice um, so technique is important, but the right technique is equally important. Um, if you learn to do something, I think it was Michael Jordan um, said, if you, if you learn to shoot uh, incorrectly a thousand times, all you're doing is learning to shoot incorrectly. So what we've created in um, Top Techers is correct technique for lots of different types of um, activity. So with my team, which I've added and I've got my players all, all set up in here. Um, what I've done is I've created um, a learning plan for them. So this has got a bunch of different techniques that I can go and watch as a coach with the correct coaching points. This is also something that the children can watch so that they've got a, a, a lesson plan that they can follow within the platform. Um, and this is kind of step one. It's actually, here's some techniques and here's how you can practice them. Then what I can do is I've got a, a leaderboard. So every um, week, every month during the, the off season, I just take a snapshot of the leaderboard based on the, 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 the filtering that by the dates. Um, so I can filter by the dates and, and put in the, the correct dates. And then I can share the leaderboard with my players and say, okay, this is who's at the top of the leaderboard. You're gonna win. Um, a bag of Haribo or whatever it is at the end of the month. So it's starting to create competition because the boys want to be the best. Um, we're not measuring necessarily who's the best here. We're measuring who's practicing the most. So when I go into each of my players um, and have a look at what they've been up to, I get a really good understanding of, of what they've been working on, um, the skills that they've, that they've got, um, the trophies that they've achieved. So I have a really good record of, um, of, of what they've been up to and what they've been doing within the app. So because they're in a league table um, and they're competing with each other, we're making it something that they can do where they're not necessarily together. It might be in the garden, it might be in the, in the yard, but they can work on it in the summer. Obviously they can go to the local park and they can, they can do some of this stuff themselves. These boys are under 13, so they're usually... Um, kicked out of the house in the morning and told to go and do stuff. So what does that do for the child? Um, so how does, that, how does it affect the child? What does the child see? So I'll go and log into my son's account and give you um, an idea. It's about making them, giving them motivation. It's about giving them responsibility. <clears throat> if we look at a physical literacy uh, framework, we're looking for people who are competent. We're looking for people who take responsibility for their own physical activity and fitness. We're looking for people who are self-motivated um, in physical activity and fitness. Because what we know is that by doing that, it generates um, an internal drive for people to improve. So he can watch his, he can go and look at the um, learning plan. He can go into any of those activities. He can watch those videos and he can view the challenge, see what the scores are for that challenge, and then he can enter those scores so that he creates a, a, a record in time of him achieving um, a score on something. He can also see the leaderboards, so he can get a good sense of, of how he's com comparing against his um, peers. He can also go and have a look at how he compares on a global basis, so he can see how he's, how he's comparing against 
children from all over the world who are, who are using top techers and have a look at what, what their scores are and how they're progressing. Um, if he wants to get more motivated, he can try and win the um, global leaderboard for the month. But really what he's trying to do is be the, be the best in his team. So <clears throat> the correct technique is important. Um, it's what separates um, average players from good players. Um, good technique will, will create much more time on the ball for players who have got good technique. Um, players who, who have average technique will have less time on the ball. They'll have less time to make decisions. They'll have less time to make the right decisions in the game. And that's fundamentally what, um, what we're trying to teach um, these children. So that's kind of the, the, what we're doing over the, over the um, break. We've got a bunch of activities from the coaching manual that I already use, and I use the training sessions. So I always know that the training sessions are great. Um, but on top of that, we're adding this ability for kids to actually start to take responsibility for their own training, obviously under the guidance of a coach. Um, just a quick thing about kind of, if you do set yourself up as a coach, um, it's really easy to go and invite your players in. They don't have to pay anything straight away. They can just access some of the skills, um, see some of the techniques, and then they can kind of make a decision on whether or not they want to go further with it. So there's no kind of pressure on them. Um, it's free for coaches and free to an extent for players. Um, but all I need to do is go in, um, request a connection with a parent, so, and, and enter their email name, choose the team that they're part of, click request connection, and then it sends them an invite. So it's dead simple um, to get uh, up and running with it. Um, and it's really straightforward to, um, to use for you as a coach in terms of creating those teams and sharing those lesson plans. And it's really simple for kids. They can go in and they can practice to their heart's content. The only thing I would say is that the monthly competitions really help especially if you are giving them something like a packet of match attacks or a bag of Haribo it doesn't have to be anything big, but having some kind of prize for actually achieving something is brilliant for children. Um, obviously we get man of the match awards every week and we get kind of um, awards for most improved at the end of the season, but this really gives children the opportunity to get rewarded for working hard and ultimately that's what we need as coaches in order to make our lives easier. We need children who are working hard to improve themselves. So that's um, the majority of, of, uh, of kind of what I was going to talk about. So I'm, I'm going to answer some questions. Someone's asked how young can players start with top techers. So I would say that it can work from kind of the age of five and upwards but it really starts to hit its sweet spot from about seven. Um, and the reason it hits its sweet spot from about seven is because that's typically um, when children are in teams. So that's really when we get that idea that they can compete with their peers, um, their direct kind of teammates um, is, is when it can really work for them. Uh, and then it's, it's, it can run through all the way to, you know, I've got the under 13s in there. Once they progress from under 13s, and if you're working with older players, and then that, that's when that information in the coaching manual is really powerful because the SNC work that we've done um, in the coaching manual was all created with um, a head of strength and conditioning at an academy here in the UK, professional academy. So it's exactly what young um, elite athletes are, are doing to improve their football playing ability. Um, it's, it's, it's definitely worth getting the older players into the coaching manual they can see the sessions as well and that that obviously improves how they engage with what you're trying to teach them as a coach um so i'll answer that question five and upwards but hits its sweet spot from seven um any other questions that people have got i think there's a couple coming in is there a maximum number of players is one question i've had and how many teams are allowed in the app there is no maximum number of players. So we are working with clubs who are adding um, entire kind of age groups across, you know, the 2010s to 2012s, for example, 
adding 150 players in um, and then breaking those down into multiple different teams. So you can add as many teams as you want. So it's really flexible. You can either use it as an individual team if you're a DOC at a club and you want to get all of your players in and then have a, an idea of what everybody's doing, then you can use it as a tool to really check how, how your players are engaged in your club. So um, very flexible piece of technology, Top Techers. Works for the individual player, works for the coach, works for the club. And that's why we designed it in the way that we did. So yeah, just to recap then, um, we are looking at things that we can do to engage players away from the training pitch. We have great sessions to engage players on the training pitch. Sharing those sessions and giving them access to those sessions means that they're engaged and they're learning away from the training pitch as well. So if you're doing one of our sessions, which has got a session by David Moyes, for example, and you're saying to your players, go and watch this session before we do it at this week's training, then essentially those children are learning directly from David Moyes. They're learning about the game. So that's extremely powerful. Um, so we are trying to do things that engage them in training sessions um, and make sure that they're learning the right things. Um, but we're also trying to engage them away from training sessions. So trying to give them things that they can learn about the game, whether that's technique or whether it's about some of the mechanics of the game, stuff that they can learn away from training to provide, to make sure that they're more engaged when they come in. Then in those periods of, of time when football or when soccer isn't played during the year, we're trying to find a way to make sure that our players keep on the learning journey. The reason why that's important is that kids play out, like I said at the start, 50% less than their parents. So we are trying to fill, we're not going to fill that entire gap. I think that's a really important point to make. We're not going to suddenly get kids to go and play an additional uh, 10 or 15 hours a week outside. Um, I think the world has changed in that regard and the distractions that they've got, the, the academic pressure that children are under nowadays is much greater. So what we're doing with teaching them the right technique with things like top techers or with ball mastery activities is that we're trying to shorten that learning process. So we're giving them something that teaches them things that are very specific um, that they can learn in 10, 15, 20 minute blocks um, that we don't then have to spend time teaching them on the training ground. We can go into those activities because they're already prepared. They know what the activity is and they've learned it away from training. Again, that drives up the engagement. Um, and the other big challenge that we're facing is how do we keep kids active and fit? Um, and I didn't kind of go through this in, in the coaching, in the, the top techers in, in, in complete detail. But if I go to look and add tasks in here, we have lots of the different techniques of the game broken down, including fitness. So some really good fitness activities that, that children can do, um, endurance, um, strength and conditioning, things that they can do to help with their physical literacy. Um, move to improve for the younger ones. So again, physical literacy, strength and conditioning, body weight exercises, always body weight exercises for younger kids. But we also have all of the different ranges of passing covered, whether it's short one and two touch passing or whether it's lofted driven or curved passes over difference, over distance, um, dribbling skills, lots of running with the ball. Um, and again, ball mastery, activities with the right techniques. So this is about shortening that learning journey. As a coach, we can control entirely what we want those children to learn in our team, but they also have the freedom to go off and do things that they, they want to work on themselves. The big thing for that, again, going back to the physical literacy, is responsibility. We want to create children who take responsibility for improving things that perhaps they're not as good at. So they can then go and create their own learning plans um, and work on the skills that they think they need to get better at. If we tick all of those boxes from a physical literacy uh, perspective, then we'll have competent players, we'll have players who take responsibility, we'll have players who are motivated, and the lifelong benefits of that are immense. Um, and, and that's kind of 
what the underlying thing for all of this is that we, we are taking children on a journey through this game but this game is about teaching them things for life and whether that's having a good attitude towards working hard whether that's a good attitude to winning or losing whether it's a it's a, a good ability to work within a team all of these things are vitally important um, and having those children taking responsibility and being motivated is a huge part of that so thanks again everyone and and um i hope you have a really really pleasant evening uh, or afternoon and uh, great games this weekend um thanks again and take care bye bye